course we are happy we win the game but sometimes I don't understand with the service regulation It was a long game and a very close one so yeah my, my legs are still shaking I don't really want to you know, show too many emotions when it's during the game Quarterfinals day here in Saarbrücken. Welcome back to Hilo Open Insight, our little tournament magazine here at the Hilo Badminton Open 2021. We're getting closer to the finals day by day and that showed today in some really intense and close matches. Today, 62 players in 20 matches were reaching for the semifinals and a lot of them had to go the full distance of three sets. My colleague Tom Kühner sums up the men's doubles, women's singles and men's singles for you. In the first quarterfinal of the men's doubles, the two Englishmen, Ben Lane and Sean Vendy, met the Thai Jumko and Kedron. The thriller went into the third set. Lane and Vendy were ahead for a long time. But the four-point lead melted away as the match progressed. In some outstanding rallies, the English found no answers to win the rallies in the end. This one was the longest of the match with 33 shots. I think it was a fair game, it was quite evenly matched. Um, I wouldn't say we played badly at all. Um, credit to them, they played quite well. Um, it was just a couple of errors at the end that, that cost us. The match point also fit the picture. The English missed several opportunities to win the point. In the end, Lane put the shuttle just out of bounds. The line judge called the shot in, but the Thai's challenge provided clarification. Jumko and Kedron move into the semi-finals. Where they will meet Gideon and Sukamulyo from Indonesia on Saturday. The minions won quite clearly against the Danes Lundgaard and Tiri. 21-14 and 21-15 was the final score. The tournament's favourites were satisfied with their performance, but there was trouble because of the referees. Of course, we are happy we win the game, but sometimes I don't understand with the service regulation. <laughs> so confusing. Sometimes you fall, sometimes no. But we serve also always same, never change. Nevertheless, the doubles team seeded first is through to the semi-finals. Right next to the minions on the right court, the daddies on the left also fought for a place in the semi-finals. But the world number two Azan and Setiawan were eliminated. Against their young compatriots Carnado and Martin, the daddies lost in two sets. This was partly due to Mohamed Azan's injury in the second set. The 34-year-old had to have treatment on his ankle and looked very handicapped afterwards. I think that little bit injured. I don't know why in the middle second set. Yeah, I feel a little bit pain. In the ankle. Not to diminish the performance of Canado Martin, this rally is just to be enjoyed. In the semi-finals, Canado Martin will again play their countrymen. Three of the four men's doubles qualified for the semi-finals come from the badminton crazy island nation. After a great fight, Aliyah Demirbak's journey in Saarbrücken ends in the quarterfinals. The young Turkish player had eliminated last year's winner Kirsty Gilmore in the first round, but now lost to Canada's Michelle Lee, who is seeded third. Demebak twice struggled with the razor thin decisions by the referees. Nevertheless, the name Demebak will surely be heard more often in the badminton world. The three set match between Kiersfeld and Chaiwan was even closer. The Dane had the upper hand in the first set but lost control more and more in the second. Especially in the long rallies, Kiersfeld made too many unforced errors. I tried the best, just took some really uh, bad decisions in the end um, and yeah, I regret that. In the second set, the Dane kept up for a long time, 
effort, in the decisive third set, the Thai quickly pulled away. Chai Wan had already knocked out second-seeded Chu Chu Wong in the last round and will face another compatriot in the semi-finals on Saturday. The next higher-ranked opponent, the next one who was knocked out of the tournament by Lo Kien Yu. The Dane Rasmus Gemke also cut his teeth on the shooting star of the Hilo Open. Although Gemke was served a match point on a silver platter in the decisive third set. But the Dane, seeded fifth, put the last shot out of bounds. So with a little bit of luck, Lo finally won after 1 hour and 12 minutes. Yeah, it was a long game and a very close one, so yeah, my, my legs are still shaking. The Singaporean's outstanding defense was the key to success. Lo will be in his first semi-final at a BWF 500 event on Saturday. Once again, the 24-year-old will try to win the hearts of the fans in Saarbrücken. I think the fans here are very supportive. Like, uh, I don't know, they, have, they are calling out my names, like uh, motivating me and that pushed me to go the distance, yeah, to fight all the way even more. Srikant Kidambi is playing an excellent tournament in Saarbrücken so far. The Indian, former world's number one, showed all his class in the quarterfinals against third-seeded Carlong Angus. In the decisive third set, the 28-year-old quickly got his first match points. But Kidambi's nerves shook a bit and he missed four of them. Long Angus defended brilliantly, playing this beautiful drop. Finally, Kidambi won his fifth match point and reaches the semi-finals of the Hilo Open well-deserved. There, he will face the world number 8 and second seeded Lisi Jia. And the man we just saw winning is now here in our studio, Srikant Gedambi. Thank you for your time. Uh, world number 15 and Indian's men's singles number 1 for like many years now, I guess. Um, yeah, congrats for reaching the semifinals. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, you stayed pretty calm on the field today and after your match point you just let it all out. Um, is that how you usually do it? Like, are you always that calm, uh, calm on, the field, on the field? Yeah, I kind of try and remain silent because I really want to focus on the moment. in the moment. I don't really want to think too much in the future. Mm -hmm. So it's more about uh, you know, thinking about the next point or you know, thinking about the strategy. So I don't really want to you know, show too many emotions when it's during the game. Yeah, you, it wasn't the first time you played against him. You've played like five times and the last time was in January. Yeah. Um, that was a pretty close loss for you. Yeah. Um, so you know him pretty well. What was your game plan today? Uh, it, was a, it was a very close match last time in January. Mm -hmm. you know, and also coming uh, into this tournament, uh, you know, yesterday was also a very good match for me. So uh, today it was all about uh, being consistent, not doing too many mistakes. I think I was able to do that in the first set really well but uh, you know second set I think he came back really well he played some very good points but uh, in the third set it was it was uh, you know say I was doing really well until uh, eight four or something and then I gave him too many points but then you know fortunately I got that lead and then at 2016 or something you know I gave him again two three points and then otherwise you know it would have been a little better the scores would have been better for me but but yeah again it's always good to be on the winning side yeah, so that's why you had some emotions after you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so you're playing a lot of tournaments right now, so it's a really long series of tournaments. Um, and you played like French and Denmark, and I saw you in two tournaments, you played uh, Canton Motor pretty early. Yeah. Um, so are you like happy that he isn't here, or would you have liked a, a revenge? Uh, see, it was, a, it was a good match in Denmark, uh, but uh, in French I was pretty close. I was leading 1970 in the third and then lost it. So probably next time, you know, I'll think and uh, you know, plan strategies and then probably focus on winning the next time I play. So you're ready for a rematch? Definitely. <laughs> All right. Um, and tomorrow in the semifinals here at Hilo Open, it's uh, Lee Zijia from Malaysia. Yeah. Um, what can we expect from that match? Uh, and I was been playing really well, you know, in the last one, one and a half year, I think he's uh, played exceptionally well at the All England, you know. And then also at um, Sudirman and Thomas Cup, so I think he's played really well. I haven't played him before, so it's uh, just want to go out there and then you know play my best. All right, and um, then thank you for your time, and uh, we'll uh, have a good recovery today, <laughs> and um, then we're looking for, for uh, looking forward to your match tomorrow. Sure, thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thank yeah. you. Thanks.
And we are now taking a look at mixed doubles and women's doubles, starting with our German pair, Mark Lamsfuss and Isabel Lohau, taking on world number five, Praveen Jordan and Melati Octavianti from Indonesia. Mati Schrag. After a solid win against the Indonesian duo Maulana and Vandaso yesterday, the best German mixed double wasn't able to keep up their run against another team from Indonesia. Although they were able to secure some longer rallies, Lamsfuss and Lohau did not find the offensive rhythm from yesterday's match. In fact, they had problems to defend especially the hard smashes from Braven Jordan. Consequently, the Indonesian duo took the lead and dominated the first set because the 27-year-old Indonesian smash expert caused huge trouble on the German side. You know that he's really strong in the attack and our tactic was for sure to, to get our attack, but uh, they made it really difficult for us and they played really good today. The Indonesian first set dominance brought an early set point that the Asian duo used to make it 1-0. Lamsfus had an explanation why they didn't find their rhythm. Today, shuttles were completely different, so we were actually slower than before. But they didn't give up. Instead, the local heroes found their way back on track. Lamsfus showed that he is also a brilliant smasher and him and Lohau secured the second set because the Indonesians also made mistakes. Even in the third set, the local heroes showed off some defense skills, but it wasn't enough against this Indonesian duo. Have the Germans been too tired? Difficult to say. Actually, we had enough energy, but uh, I think they changed some tactics again. Uh, made it really difficult for us, and uh, I think they just made it better in the end. Matchball Indonesia and Loha return Jordan Surf out of bounds. The Indonesian badminton festivals in Saarbrücken go on after this three-set win by Praveen Jordan and Melati Daiva Octavianta. All lights on today's mixed highlight between the world-ranked three duo Dejapol Pua Varanukro and Sapsire Tairatanachai from Thailand and Hafiz Faisal and Gloria Emanuel Vidyaya from Indonesia. Even the loud shouts by Faisal didn't rescue the Indonesians from losing against the tournament's favorite from Thailand. In a tense match, they bet the Indonesian double in a three-set match with 20-22, 21-16 and 21-60. A good message to the rest of the participants, Indonesian players can also lose in Saarbrücken. The last remaining German athletes Linda Ifler and Isabel Lohau had to face Rin Iwanaga and Kina Kaneshi from Japan. After a balanced start, the German fans had to bury their last hopes on a German semi-finalist because the Japanese duo was too flexible and precise on the court. Long rallies like this one regularly found a Japanese happy end. What did the Japanese do better than Ifler and Lohau? Um, they were more steady than we were. I think we had a few chances, but yeah, it was not good enough. All the coaching and useful advice didn't change the fact that the Japanese women found the better solutions on the court. They anticipated the Germans' defensive moves and set a shuttle smoothly into the free space. But there was also another reason for the German problems. Three days fast shuttles and now very, very slow shuttles. Um, we didn't find the right length and so their attack was yeah, too strong. This strength was transformed into a clear two-set win. Final score 21-15, 21-16. I think we are quite happy that we, are in the, we are, were in the quarterfinals here um, and made, it made a lot of fun to, um, to play in front of our home crowd. Ivanaga and Nakanishi are now going to battle Siti Fadia Silva and Rivka Sugiato from Indonesia in the semis. They won their match against the strong defending Putita Supayirakul and Sapsire Tairatanachai from Thailand in a three-set match, making it 15-21, 24-22 and 21-16. The best women's double in the field, Yonkol Pan Kitita Rakul and Ravinda Prayongchai performed well against the Dutch double Deborah Yille and Cheryl Seiden. The tournament's favorite won clearly in two sets 21-15 and 21-9. The Thai double is right on track, 
Their next challengers will be the other remaining Japanese double, Chisato Hoshi and Aoi Matsuda. So unfortunately the last two German pairs are out of the home tournament and Isabel Lohau couldn't win either of her two quarterfinals. But before their match in women's double, Linda and Isabel had to face another challenge today, Lisa's quiz time. Dinner kebab. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really German in this question. <laughs> Which badminton women's double is currently ranked number one in the world? Uh, Fukushima Hirota, I would say. Really? Yes. Is it right? <laughs> oh, okay. ah. Which badminton player has the most Instagram followers? Tronia Summerwell? No. Uh, nah, Kevin yeah. Zucamoya? No. Victor Akhtarin? No. It's a girl. It's a girl. Sindhu. Hey! <laughs> Sindhu! <laughs> How long is the badminton court? Yeah, fuck it. I knew this was going to come. Um, 13.74 meters. 13.4. When did badminton officially become an Olympic sport? My birth year, 1992. So good. <laughs> From which country comes the sport of boccia? Croatia, Italy, France. Italy? Right. Yeah. What are the colors of the Olympic rings? The colors? The colors? Yeah, black, red, blue, yellow, green. <laughs> What is the slowest sport in the world? The slowest sport? Mm -hmm. Chess. <laughs> it is? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Depends. There's speed chess, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Normal chess. How many does liters of coffee does a German drink on average per year? <sighs> Maybe we should get the average between you and me. <laughs> the average. 80. It's more. More? 120. More? <laughs> 160. 165. 166. Oh, wow. It's a lot. Wow. I don't drink coffee at all. Yeah. <laughs> so I have no idea about this question. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, two. Uh, How high is Saarbrücken above sea level? Oh, <laughs> Estimate. Three hundred. <laughs> Lower. <laughs> One hundred eighty. Now it's two hundred thirty. Hmm. <laughs> oh. what, what's the favorite candy of the Germans? Chocolate. Chocolate. <laughs> right. Yeah. What's your favorite? Chocolate. <laughs> I'm really German in this question. <laughs> yeah. The biggest Döner Kebab in the world comes from Germany. How big was it? I heard the schnitzel question from yesterday, so you have to aim really big, really high. <laughs> um, 400 kilos. What? Close. Yeah. What? <laughs> you have to listen to the... Uh, 500. 440. 423. <sighs> so 400 was not so far away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm, delicious. Delicious. Yeah, enjoy. Oh, die Buzzer, ey, die will ich zu Hause auch haben. That was quarterfinals day here at the Hilo Badminton Open. 10 super exciting semifinals coming up tomorrow and we'll see you afterwards with all the highlights. Servus and goodbye.